And in Psalm 90, 91, I'm going to read from the Jerusalem version because I have a lot of notes on the, book, on the page. I know it's not the preferred version for most of you, but it's the oldest Bible I have. It's over 40 years old. And I've got a lot of notes, so I have to... I, at some times I can't use any other <coughs> translation. But you can use any translation you like. Really, mostly, unless it's a very bad translation, as Charles Simpson would say, it's not the translation, it's doing what it says is the problem. As most of us argue about translations, but it's when you don't do what it says. That's what you've got to look at. Do what it says. Uh, don't overly worry about the translation, but there are some translations that are better than others. Some, of course, are more literal, which is one, one way, but some, some others try to get the sense, which are also, you need both. So it says in, in verse 1, if you shelter in Elion. Now, here in these first four verses, we have four names of God. So Elion means God Most High. So if you shelter on God Most High, that's a sort of a very, um, you know, it's, it's an encouraging name for God. If you know God is God Most High, then it gives you a bit more confidence to rest in God, to know that your confidence is in God because he's God Most High. He's not some little... God, he's God most high. That's what Elion means. So if you, uh, it says in, in the scripture, in the psalmist, he says, if you, you live in the shelter. Now again, how do you live in the shelter? Well, um, you know, there's a shelter out right behind us there. Will you go and stand underneath it? That shelter is no good to, to you if you don't stand underneath it if you're out in that yard and the sun's there and you stay in the sun, you're going to be burnt by the sun. But if you go underneath that shelter, then you will be protected from the sun. Okay? So the shelter uh, of God Most High is when we pray, is when we fellowship, is when we read the Word of God, is when we worship. See, worship is very important. That's why the, 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 the presence of God the shelter. If we can't praise God, if we can't praise God, there's something wrong. We've got to look at it. Why can't I open my mouth and praise God on Sunday? Well, it could be a couple of reasons. One, it could be that my emotions are in charge, have taken control. And it's easy to do when something goes wrong, my emotions get a little bit suspect. I've got to be careful because I can get down with those emotions. So what I do when that happens, I go to God. Because I can't be ruled by circumstances or by my emotions. Emotions are not bad in themselves. They're neutral. But I can't be ruled by them. So I can't, what happens is, if I'm ruled by them, I'll start to spiral down. So I go to God so that I can um, see things properly and not see them out of emotions. That's how our society functions by and large. People are run by their emotions. They're run by the whole, all the advertising you see on television. It appeals to your emotions. It appeals to your selfishness. That's, that's the culture that we have today. But if you want the protection, if you want to dwell in his shelter of the Lord Most High and make your home in the shadow of Shaddai, which means the God of heaven or almighty God, almighty God, I can remember when I was at school, uh, the brother used to say all the time, almighty God, almighty God. And you know, you know, I know we can look back and think perhaps things weren't as, as balanced, but one thing we've lost in the modern era is this sense that God is almighty. God is almighty. He is almighty God. That's another name for God. God is almighty. 
He's all powerful. If God, you know, if God is for you, who can be against you? Now, again, we can't be silly uh, and, and, you know, but when we know that we're in the will of God, when we know we're flowing with God, then we have to be confident in the fact that God is almighty. And, you know, one way to, to think about this is to think about Jesus. You see, you see, when we pray in Jesus' name, it's not I pray, you know, uh, Michael, get better in Jesus' name, okay? I've, no, that's not necessarily going to... I'm praying because of what Jesus has done, because Jesus is the Son of God. I'm praying for Michael to get better because Jesus carries my prayer. Jesus is the perfect Son of God. So God cannot answer, cannot but answer his prayer. So when I pray in Jesus' name, that's what I should be doing, not just praying in Jesus' name, because that means that doesn't mean a lot. But I'm actually praying because of Jesus and who he is. It's like having, you know, the Holy Spirit is our advocate, but Jesus is, God can't refuse him. <laughs> Can't refuse him if it's, if it's the will of God because he only does the will of the Father. So you think about that next time you pray in Jesus' name. Actually make it count. So it's important that we, we think about that. There's a lot of things to think about in the spiritual life. Again, sometimes, you know, we think we know it all and we've reached... There, it, it's never-ending, never-ending... God is never ending. God is, is so big. He's almighty God. He is um, Elion, God most high. And, and you can say to Yahweh, that's the name of God, which the Jews will not pronounce. And they just say the Lord. But that's the name of God. The Lord or Jehovah. It depends on how you use the vowels and... And, and so forth. But that, that's the holy name of God. See, God is holy. That's another aspect about him. So when we call someone's name Philip, there is a certain identification when I say that name with the person in front of me. Now, when, when we talk to God, um, um, the, this name Jehovah Yahweh or the Lord, as they put it, because they won't even pronounce it, the essence of that is that God is holy. Therefore, no profane thing will go near him. So when you have profanity in your life, you've got a barrier between you and God because in his essence, he's holy. Now, I know he loves us and I know he sent Jesus and this is why I have to have all this imbalance. But in his essence... He's holy. And I want to speak in the coming weeks on the fear of the Lord. Because for any real move of God, there has to be the fear of the Lord. And again, we have to understand what the fear of the Lord means. It's not God bashing us up with a big stick or something. It's got nothing to do with that at all. But understand, when you're watching a television show, and something profane comes, can you just watch it and then come on Sunday and worship God? Not really. Not really. I don't care what people say. I don't care what people say about movies. Um, if Jesus can't sit there, couldn't, was there and he couldn't sit there to watch it, I, I will not watch it. It's as simple as that. Now, I know sometimes it's hard because you're watching maybe the football and something comes on. Uh, you have to be quick with your hands, <laughs> very quick. Uh, but um, as far as I'm concerned, we profane ourselves too much. We, 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 we live in profanity because our, you know, you don't even have to put the television. You can just drive your car and billboards are full of profanity. But if... if we can't help that. 
and we can't help to look at them sometimes. But if we engage in them, then it's not going to help us. Because again, it puts a barrier between us and God. That's his name. You go and look it up for yourself. Again, everything I say, don't believe me necessarily. Just look it up yourself and find out for yourself. All I can do on a Sunday is give you some hints and tips. So you can say of this holy God, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God. Again, another name for God, Elohim. In you I trust. See, this is the four names of God here give us somewhat of a picture of God. It's not comprehensive, it's not full. But there's, a, there's an aspect of God. He's almighty, he's most high, he's holy, and he's God. That means there's no one like him. So we start there, and the psalmist start there with the four, four names of God, and he talks about how there is protection in God. But we have to know, again, if, if I feel safe with someone or I feel safe under a shelter, I've got to know that that place is safe. I've got to know what that, what that person is about or what that structure is about. Okay? So if uh, we were seeing some show yesterday about storms and things like that and there was structures in some of these storms that they thought would be strong, but they weren't strong enough. The waves actually knocked them down. So we've got to be secure in what we're standing under. We've got to be secure in, 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 um, in people. We've got to trust them. We've got to know what they're like. So it's the same with God. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to get through all this, but we might finish next week. But then there are seven things that God, the psalmist says, the psalmist, says that he rescues us from. So he rescues you from the snares of fowlers hoping to destroy you. What does that mean? That could mean a lot of things, but it usually means people. Could be friends. From what? What, what are some of the worst things that people can do is be jealous of you. Jealousy has a powerful curse in it. <laughs> so when, when, when I find that ha- that's happening, I pray. Because I don't want, uh, you know, that sort of curse around me. And I have to repent of any jealousy I might have and get rid of that by praying in tongues so that I can be freed of it. So I can't pray against something if it's in me to the best of my ability. So the first thing he frees us from, and he frees me personally, and then he frees me from the effects of, is jealousy. Jealousy is very powerful, brothers and sisters. It's, it, it can be a spiritual force, can become, if it is... Um, seriously entertained and encouraged in a person's soul. Now, if we're a little bit jealous, that's not necessarily uh, demonically fortified. But if we encourage it, if we, if we feed it, if we um, practice it, it will become a problem. But we can have freedom from it. And we can have freedom from jealousy of other people. So that's the first thing that he frees us from. He frees us uh, from snares of fowlers hoping to destroy you. He covers you with his feathers and you will find rest underneath his wings. The, the, God also, um, again, he shelters us from the devil, from demonic power. Again, in our Western society, we, in our scientific, mathematical Western society, we don't give much credibility to the supernatural. 
And again, there are some cultures that give too much to it, okay? Particularly more primitive cultures. And it is become superstitious. And there's been times in, even in church history where that has happened. However, today we have the opposite problem where, generally speaking, people do not acknowledge the work of the devil or demonic power. And again, there are different levels. And we have to be clear. I'm just giving you a very basic. Uh, uh, some people are possessed, but there are very few people. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. Then there are some people that are infested. Occasionally we've come across people like that. We've had to deal with it. That again is fairly rare. But most people fall into the, the, the next two categories where they need deliverance from the influence in their life. It doesn't mean they're bad people or, or anything like that. But we, we, it's a clean up. And most people need to deal with it on a daily basis. Because, again, what we don't understand, and this is the point I'm trying to make, that when we go out the door to work... And when we get in our car and we go to work and then come back again and come home, there are, there are things like demonic power that will try to ruffle us or upset us or take us. For example, uh, let's say we get, we get into the office and someone gets a promotion. We get a bit jealous. Now we have a... We, we can do one... We can... We can try and deal with that quickly in prayer. We can try and bless that person. We can try and congratulate them. Uh, or we can entertain the jealousy and allow that jealousy to fester all day. And then something sort of fortifies it and makes it um, like something that sort of gets hold of us and we can't get rid of it. So, so, you see, that, that's the work of, of, of an evil spirit. We've got to be aware. If we're aware, we just tell it to go. It's not a problem. It's easy as anything. But we don't, we don't, we, we don't in our scientific world, we don't have room for that. But we need to make room for it. Again, not to be overly conscious of it. Uh, got to be normal, but... There are some people that go too far. If you're that type of person, then be careful. Don't do it. Because some people go far too far because there's a bentness. There's a sort of a, a spiritual bentness. So be careful. But this is for most people I'm talking about. The next thing is you need not fear the terrors of night nor the arrow that flies by day. The plague that stalks in the dark, dark, the scourge that wrecks havoc in broad daylight. So the Lord also frees us from the unknown. And most things are unknown. When you walk out of here today, in one sense you may know you're going to lunch or where you're going. But most things in the future are unknown to you. They're just a fact. If we knew everything... and but sometimes the unknown can have problems for us. The enemy can use it to bring depression or bring negativity into our life or bring uncertainty. Now, God doesn't want that to happen. He wants us. This is where we do have to put our, our life into the will of God into his divine will, if you like, where we have to trust him. This is an area where we do need, in a sense, to um, allow God to determine our future. Because a lot of things are unknown and many people fear the unknown. But if we're in Christ, we don't need to fear the unknown. You know, one thing is you're going to live with Christ forever if you know him. That 
fact should kill every unknown other factor in your life. Every other unknown factor should be secondary to that fact. Jesus said, this is eternal life to know him, the only true God in Jesus Christ, and thou was sent. That determines everything. That gives us joy. That gives us the reason for us being here. That gives us hope in life. That gives us great satisfaction. You know, when I hear stories about people, even this last week I heard stories about people, particularly where drugs are involved, and we heard of a person who lived like a wild beast for many, many years of his life. And he was in Australia. And he roamed uh, the countryside. And recently they found him dead. A highly intelligent man. Horrible life. The devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. But we don't need to fear that. Because we have Christ. When you don't have Christ, you've got a lot to fear. Have Christ, you've got nothing to fear. Because your unknown, your future, is in his hands. And God protects you from that. I'm going to have to finish shortly because I won't be able to get through all this. The fourth thing, um, though a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, you yourself will remain unscathed with his faithfulness for shield and buckler. Again, um, you don't have to fear bodily harm. Now, we're not silly and we don't go in places that we shouldn't go. But I'm confident always, whenever I go to a place, when I get into a car, when I get on a plane, I'm confident that no harm is coming to me. Why? Because God said so. I'm not going to be harmed because I'm in his hands. And that's what God protects us from. But again, if we give no service to that, if we don't pray, if we just take things for granted, then something may happen if we're not alert to the fact that, um, you know. And I remember once I was a, in, in, in America, we were on a tarmac and there was a plane that was taking. There was a couple of people with me and one people prayed and the Lord showed him what was wrong showed him the engine, where it was the problem. And he prayed. And then after about two hours, they said, it's, it's all fixed up. We can go. Praise the Lord. You see how God protects you? Um, very good. Very good to sort of um, check in with him. You know, and, uh, very important. Okay. You have only to look around to see how the wicked are repaid. You can... You can say Yahweh is my refuge and make Elion your fortress. Again, the Lord protects us now again um, from sickness. Now, in the old covenant, you know, if a person, if, if things didn't go well for a person in life, they were cursed. If they went well, then they were blessed. It's not that simple in the new covenant. However, however, again... We pray for healing here. That's why you had a meeting yesterday and you prayed for healing, the women here. And I just want to thank everyone who was involved. did a great job. Um, what were you doing here? You were praying for healing, weren't you? Because we believe um, that if we get sick, that we can go to God who can heal us. Now, sometimes people don't get healed. We don't understand everything. But mostly they do. And mostly we, we know that God wants to heal us. That's, that's his will for us. So we ask him for healing. We just, again, we're not fatalist. We just don't accept things. We ask God to heal us. So again, this psalm is trying to say that God will protect us from sickness. And it's good to pray Not to get sick, rather than to pray, ask for prayers when you get sick. Okay? It's a good policy to pray this psalm and pray that you don't get sick. 
That's better than getting sick and then having to get prayer. Because God protects us. By the grace of God, by the grace of God only, um, I've prayed this because I remember I was in hospital when I was uh, 20 something, 20, early 20s. And I said, I, you know, God, if I possible, I don't want to come back here again. I haven't been back except for one night. Because we, we have to ask God to, again, things will, can happen and, you know, that's, I cannot give you, I don't understand everything. But I'm trying to follow the principles here. And these are the principles of God's protection. No disaster can overtake you. I'm going to finish short. No plague come near your tent. He will put his angels in charge to guard you wherever you go. He, 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 he protects us from disasters and he protects us from plagues. You know, there are a lot of plagues um, recently. When I, when I worked in my previous job, there was a man, and um, I was still quite young in those days, and he was older. He was my age now. And uh, he came from Wollongong, actually, and uh, he was telling me that his father died in the plague, you know, after the First World War, when he came back from the war. And, um, and he was very young when his father died. And so... There are plagues. There was the swine flu. There was all these sorts of things that are still around the place. Well, again, don't wait till you get sick. Pray, Psalm 91. So God will protect us from these things. It's very important. Now, I'm not going to finish because I was going to also talk about um, the three things that God offers us, which are protection, security and rest, which are the last... Um, few verses. Now, um, anyway, I'll just simply say that God protects us. He secures us like being under that tent and he gives us rest. I'll just read the last verses and then make a comment. I rescue all who cling to me. I protect whoever knows my name. I answer everyone who invokes me. I am with them when they're in trouble. I bring them safety and honour. I give them life long and full and show them how I can save. Now, one of the things that I wrestle with is rest. It's not easy to be a peaceful, restful person. It shows that you're confident in God. Now, I'm probably better than I used to be, uh, but... When a person is restful and peaceful, there's a confidence that they give you. When a person is panicky, uptight, nervous, insecure, they're kind of not encouraging to be around, are they? No. No. So God wants to bring us to that rest which says something when we're at rest. It says that we're, we're, our confidence is in God. God is the person that we're confident in. We're proving it by not being flustered, by not being panicky, by not getting angry, by not shouting, but being relaxed that God's in control in that sense, and this is where there has to be balance, in that sense, we have to trust in God then. We have to trust that God is in control when we can't do anything about it. We have to then have our hands into the, into the divine will, understanding that he's in control. And show it. Show it by our behaviour. Show it by our peace. Show it by our shalom. That's how we know that we're working well with God. Now, again, I will say this. We're all on a journey. No one should feel condemned. No one should feel bad about this talk because we're all on a journey and I'm working through some of these things myself 
We're in a process. We're here to grow. We're here to learn. We're here to make progress in the spiritual life. And so what I'd ask you is, can you make progress in your spiritual life? Can you take something from this psalm that will help you? Maybe it's just understanding more about God. Maybe it's understanding that he does give us protection when we pray. Maybe it's about the things that he does for us. Maybe it's a combination of those things. Maybe we just start to pray the prayer on a daily basis um, of God's protection and make proclaiming Psalm 21. Now, don't read it as a, as a, as a bedtime story, but proclaim it. Proclaim it. Proclaim it. Even if you just proclaim the first four verses, if you make... If you live in the shelter of Elion and make your home in the shadow of Shaddai, that is God Almighty, Almighty God, you can say to the Lord, Yahweh, my refuge, my fortress, you, God, is in whom I trust. It is you, Elohim, in whom I trust. For you rescue me from the snares, make it personal, of fowlers hoping to destroy me. He covers me with, you, you cover me with your feathers and, you, and I find shelter in your, under your wings. That's what I do, I make it personal. I need not fear the terror of night or the arrow that flies in the daytime or the plague that stalks in the dark or the scourge that wrecks havoc in broad daylight and so forth. Personalise it. Say it. And you'll start to come through because we've got to proclaim the word of God. This is what we've been trying to say. And we've got to confess it and agree with it. 